We have been watching the court cases transpire and we've seen allegations of poor investigations in the Senzo Mayua murder trial. But just how widespread is the problem? Yes, Senzo Maria is a high-profile individual, a lot of spotlights, a lot of cameras, a lot of attention on this one particular case. But what about the average South African? What about you and me? What about the cases that get taken to police stations around the world that will never have the opportunity of being scrutinized to this level? Well, the Western Cape government has looked into this issue, and they found that almost 300 cases were struck off the roll due to police incompetence. Let's discuss this now with the Western Cape Community Safety MEC, Reagan Allen. A very good morning to you, MEC, and thank you for your time. Quite interested to find out what is it that prompted you as the Western Cape uh, Community Safety Department to probe this particular issue? Thank you so much for this particular opportunity and for your clear introduction. It's very evident that in terms of the current criminal justice system, too many of our survivors, too many of the victims have been sadly led down. In 2014, a decision was made to initiate a court watching brief unit within the department to monitor the inefficiencies, incompetencies, so that we can have a turnaround strategy, but also so that we can hold SAPs and any person in the criminal justice system accountable. Tommy, I am delighted that on the one hand that this particular initiative has also now is in the process of also being adopted across our entire country. We have submitted that via our MINMIC and our policing needs and priorities and national government has also instructed other um, um, provinces to also adopt this particular initiative because we are wanting to see no secondary victimization when a rape victim, when a family of a person that has been murdered, um, if they don't get justice or see that justice is to be served, um, it often leads to secondary victimization and this initiative is for us in our oversight, it's not a tick box exercise, it's not to blame, it's for us to fix um, those incompetencies and for us to ultimately take hold of our oversight role that in my view should lead to better service delivery from now, the South now, MEC, you monitored 33 courts um, in, in the Western Cape. Is there a sort of pattern that you discovered in the nature of the cases that were falling off and, and, and falling through? Yes, most definitely, especially the 77 gender-based violence cases. We have monitored over 82 police stations. We have 151 in our province, but we are continuing to see how we can have turnaround strategies that is very specific to a particular precinct. For example, when there's a lack of detective services in one particular precinct, it could lead to the to the docket ultimately not arriving in court, to that particular investigation not being completed. But the trend continually is that our detective services are overburdened. They are sitting with a caseload of over 200 dockets per detective, which is humanly impossible. And that is part of our policing needs and priorities, which we as a province, in terms of the constitution, is obligated on a yearly basis to make available to the South African Police Service, which is a national competency. Sadly, we have seen that many of our recommendations, many of our inputs are never taken into account. Often budgetary constraints are cited in that regard, but we remain clear. We are wanting to ensure that the police that is servicing our residents are ultimately professional and that they bring about the level of service that can ultimately lead to trust being fostered between residents, victims, communities, and the South African police service. MEC, so before, MEC, MEC before, I, before I let you go, will there be any sort of personal liability? Because ultimately the rules are there, they need to be followed, uh, policemen uh, go through the training that is required. Should they not perform their duties in a way uh, that is worthy of, of merit, will there be any sort of personal liability in that side, on that front? Thank you so much for this question. Um, it is clear that when we released 
I'll report six months ago, there was one particular station which we have highlighted as being deeply problematic. We have in that particular instance seen that disciplinary action was taken against a number of SAPS officers at that particular station. We welcome that because we want to send a strong message that any person that has taken an oath to serve and protect and to ultimately investigate crime should do it to the best of his or her ability. But we have seen when there is warnings, verbal warnings, even dismissals being taken um, by the South African Police Service. And it's also part of our call for, for SAPS to be at a provincial level. So it's closer to the people so that the management um, can not only come from Pretoria, but at the province where we can get rid of incompetencies. We can make sure that training is ramped up so that these particular matters do not occur in the future. And the one particular station that had 12 cases, uh, just yesterday I was at that particular station engaging the SAPS again around the turnaround strategy because we wouldn't want to see that. And that was in Lutzville yesterday. So we're on the ground working with SAP, strengthening their hand to ensure that victims are actually helped and assisted. But yes, we are wanting to see that there is accountability and that those officers are ultimately held, um, held accountable.